Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist at the University of Tasmania in Australia. Today we're going to be looking at LookC, a carbon emissions tool for estimating soil, soil carbon based on a digitised grid, as well as potential greenhouse gas emissions mitigation from the Emissions Reduction Fund, which is the federal Australian government's uh, scheme for carbon markets for remunerating landholders for emissions mitigation. To find LookC, uh, I've just gone to Google and I've typed in look C with a C there, hyphen C. Just open up the first one that comes up here. That's a relatively simple and intuitive layout, which is really, which is a um, uh, a really good aspect and makes it quite easy to use. So if we hit um, uh, explore your options or farm details, it'll lead you to the same place. It's only available for Australia. Um, so if you're in other countries, you might need to look for other tools. Um, it's based on Google Maps, so if you roll your mouse in, you can zoom in or zoom out. Now, all we really do is we define a project area. So I'm going to say I'm in Tasmania, which I am. I'm in Launceston, but I might assume an area near Launceston. Now, this satellite image is taken in the summertime because you can see the dry areas and you can see the irrigated areas. So what we might do is I'll just assume a random irrigated area um, I've got no knowledge of the prior irrigation, prior land use in this area, um, and you as a landholder may well do. Um, we hit the area tool. Um, now, keep away from fe uh, fences, boundaries, waterways, and everything else because that would screw up the estimate essentially. Then you define your project area or your paddock or your field with which you want to improve soil carbon or register for a greenhouse gas emissions mitigation carbon farming market. So I'm going to go around the edges here. You might do a more perfect uh, shape, but I'm just going to do that for illustration, keeping well away from fence lines and so on. Um, then we just, so we've done that, make sure you connect it back at the start. Now what areas do we want to exclude? We want to include exclude forest, wetlands, roads, everything basically, except for your arable land area. Prior production systems, note that I'm not familiar with this area, but I'm assuming that it's a crop. And I'm not familiar with the paddock, but I'm familiar with the region. Um, was stubble removed? Most likely not. Was synthetic fertiliser used? Most likely yes. Prior use of lime? I assume yes. Note there's a bug in this irrigation here. Um, if we hit no, it pops up with this option, where's the irrigation from? It actually should, I think, pop up the other way. If we hit yes, it should pop up with the additional option down the bottom. Um, where's the irrigation from? But it seems to be the wrong way around. But nonetheless, if we hit yes, because it's, a, it's an irrigated area, which is obvious, um, because we can tell by the distinct green area and it's a summertime image, we hit next. Um, all it's essentially doing, now the Australian government um, calls methods carbon farming markets. So it's, a, it's options for greenhouse gas emissions mitigation. Now these are measured in ACUs, Australian Carbon Credit Units, um, and the alternative for that is tonnes of CO2 equivalents. So the values given below are in tonnes of CO2 equivalents per hectare per year. And so obviously the higher the tonnes of CO2 equivalents per hectare per year, the better. Now these are typically done, they, all of these are done under a 25 year period which is the least possible enrolment period under the Emissions Reduction Fund. You can also register for a 100 year period. So you've got two options. Uh, voluntary markets are totally different. Um, so for, this, for that patch and that area that I outlined in the previous slide was 21 hectares, you've got estimate soil carbon using the default values method which is using full cam which is modelled. You've got planting trees, which is reforestation by environmental or mallee plantings. And you've got measuring soil carbon. Now this is the one that I want to show you um, because it estimates soil carbon for your paddock or for the areas that you outline. Just before I go into that though, just remember that figure there. So the trees, um, vegetation, planting um, environmental species or environmentally appropriate species or mallee eucalypts, um, it's assuming about 10 tonnes of CO2 equivalents per hectare per year. Now, one CO2 equivalent is about 3.78 um, tonnes. Uh, 
3.78 times the amount of actual carbon. So if you divide that by 3.78 or divide it by 4, it's about 2 tonnes of organic carbon per hectare per year that's sequestered. So that's ACUs, which is what you get paid for. Um, but the actual amount of carbon, um, which would be sequestered in the wood, is that number divided by 3.78. So if we go into the soil carbon sequestration method, you hit estimate. What it does is it takes out a little while to um, uh, ingest all of the digital soil carbon from the surrounding area. It says it takes up to 30 seconds, but it's typically quicker than that, at least on my machine. It'll come up with an estimate. Now, what it's showing is the estimated soil carbon for that patch is 2.7%. That's relatively high. It's probably based on what it thinks the land use was as well as the soil type and the climate and it's probably indicative. In the absence of a real measured number it's quite good. It's a very useful handy tool. It gives you this histogram here to say well within a 100k radius you've got some some soils that are up to 8.5 percent but that's only 0.3 percent of the soils in that 100k radius so I probably wouldn't um, base too much weight on that value particularly for your soil carbon because it's extreme. Um, and you can see that the majority of soils, 30% of the soils within that 100k radius, within the top 30 centimetres, is between 2.5 and 3.5%. So if a lot of them are up to 3.5% and we're currently 2.7% now, we might assume that with the imposition of some intervention, for example, altered grazing management, or a deep-rooted pasture, or uh, improved soil fertility. Any of these measures can build soil carbon. So we might assume that after 25 years, I'm going to target 3.5%, because that's reliable for the carbon in the region. So let's go up to 3.5% here. And you can do it this way. Um, obviously, you can go right out, but it's probably not indicative. And then we hit Confirm. Now. The only thing that I really wanted to show you was this total amount of carbon likely to be sequestered over the area. So that's in ACUs or tonnes of CO2 equivalents, same thing. 2,500, which is quite good. And you're getting a, an indicative tonnes of CO2 equivalents per hectare per year of about five, which is roughly half of the carbon that would be sequestered by actively growing trees, which is probably... Uh, probably reliable, but just remember if you get drought, that will set that back. And so that's really all I wanted to show you. You can go back in into your initial estimate and change the area to see if it will change. Um, so, for example, if we hit delete, we can do a little patch here on this dry land area. But note that it's not very sensitive. It's mostly based on the region rather than um, the prior land use, which you would think it would be, but it's less so. If we go out here, just by way of example, and we go over um, to an area that is already under forest, um, the question would be, does it give me any options that are now available for reforestation? Because it's actually got a forest on it. So if we, everything else, um, so make sure that you update any of the prior land use history when you update the area. So what was the prior production system? Well, nothing, native forest. That's it. Notice all the other options are gone. We don't want to exclude native forest, so we get rid of that. And then we hit Next. Now it's coming up with different available methods or different greenhouse gas emissions policies. So it's saying avoided clearing. So one Australian government method under the Emissions Reduction Fund is avoided clearing of native growth. Now you can see, just remember to look at these numbers in context, that we had about 9 or 10 tonnes of CO2 equivalents for environmental plantings, we had about 5 for soil carbon, and avoided clearing is in between. And that's because this native um, vegetation is probably not actively growing or not actively growing as much. And there's only one other thing I wanted to talk about, and that's co-benefits. If you click on that, it will actually show you the type of co-benefits. In imposing any greenhouse gas emissions mitigation, you should think about co-benefits. And co-benefits that improve productivity, for example, improve soil fertility and soil carbon may increase soil carbon, may increase yield, 
you may well get a productivity and a profitability benefit. And there's other co benefits like improved water quality, less runoff improved biodiversity and so on. So think think about co-benefits and this look see tool gives you an indication of those as well. That's all I wanted to say for today. Thanks very much for watching.